Today, we're having a seance, a psychology seance. Oh, spirits, hear our words. We bring you gifts from life into death. Commune with us and move among what us. What the hell are you doing? A seance. Salience. You're supposed to be talking about stimulus salience. Ah, oh, sh. Hi everyone, welcome to Psy vs. Psy, where we talk about all things psychology, so if you're into that, feel free to subscribe. Today we're talking about a term you hear in psychology, especially in the field of learning, called salience, or sometimes stimulus salience. This issue came up in my recent video on the Rescorla Wagner model, so I thought I'd do an expanded discussion of the idea. Now this term salience doesn't have a really solid definition, its edges are all fuzzy, but I think you'll be able to get the gist. Basically, salience describes how meaningful or attention-getting a stimulus is. Now, the most obvious way to make a stimulus more attention-getting is to increase its intensity. If I play a loud boat horn and give you $1,000, you're going to learn to associate the sound with the reward faster than if I sniffled and tossed you a half-eaten M&M. But changing stimulus intensity isn't the only way to increase the salience of a stimulus. What about your needs or current situation? If you're broke, $5 might be more salient as a reward than if you're a millionaire. If all I have is $1, well, that's a pretty important dollar. But I'm pretty sure Jeff Bezos would probably throw away several dollars just to make me go away. <laughs> Studies with animals show this too. One really cool example involves conditioned taste aversion. Now, if you're unfamiliar with taste aversion, it's worth watching our video on John Garcia and taste aversion learning. Basically, animals learn to avoid tastes that have been paired with illness. In this case, a Japanese research team, Sawa, Nakajima, and Imada, this was done back in 1999, conducted a study with rats where they fed them a diet that was lacking in sodium for a period of time. Then, they were allowed to drink salt water and they were given lithium chloride, which is a drug that makes them feel sick to their stomach for a short period of time. Five days later, they were tested again with the salt solution to see if they had learned to avoid it. Not surprisingly, they did learn to avoid the salt water. Now, they also included a control group that was not sodium deprived, who also learned to avoid the salt water, but the group that was deprived of salt learned a stronger aversion and drank less of the salt water than the non-deprived group. Now there are other similar studies, but I mentioned this one because it seems like, if anything, the salt-deprived group would have an incentive to drink more of the salt, not less. So the fact that they drank less is an elegant way to show the importance of stimulus salience. I've got one more experiment to share with you about stimulus salience, and whoo boy, this one's gonna take some turns. Strap in. This study comes from a researcher named Mike Damian. Now that's Damian with a J, so if you've only ever seen it written, you might be tempted to pronounce it Damjan, but now you're one of the cool people who knows how it's properly pronounced. In fact, I'm strongly influenced by Damian on this topic. First of all, his Principles of Learning is a top-notch introductory textbook if you're interested in the subject at all. Also, he was the mentor of my undergraduate mentor, so I feel especially connected to his work. One of his big contributions is using sexual conditioning in Japanese quail as a model of learning. Why quail sex? Well, it's an interesting model precisely because it's so different from the traditionally studied types of learning with either fear or food, usually using rodents. One interesting finding is that quail sexual conditioning follows many of the same rules that other types of learning follow, which tells us there are general rules of learning that appear to be common across all kinds of different situations and all kinds of different stimuli. Also, quail are built for sex. They have an impressive testicle to body size ratio and their reproductive strategy is similar to that of Doritos old ad slogan, eat all you want, we'll make more. Is that reference too old? Oh God. There's an interesting case here though, in terms of stimulus salience. The basic procedure works like this. The male quail is placed in an arena, a big open area, for 15 minutes or so. On either end of the arena are doors that open into compartments. Behind one door is the conditioned stimulus, which is a vaguely quail-shaped wooden block covered with fabric. Behind the other door is the unconditioned stimulus, the quail's girlfriend. Okay, so he's running around this arena and suddenly the door opens to the wood block CS. 30 seconds go by and then the door opens to the actual female quail. 
Now the male tends to run over and try to mate with the female. And after several presentations, the male will start mounting and trying to copulate with the wood block CS. This tells us that he is learning. Now here's where it gets really wild. If you make the CS more salient by attaching an actual taxidermy female quail head to it, the learning happens faster, the behaviors are stronger, and they're more long lasting. So this tells us that some stimuli, like quail heads, have been selected for to be especially salient for learning certain types of behaviors. Now it makes sense that over the centuries the quail's ancestors would have been able to look out across the grassland and see the heads of the female quail popping up above the grass line. And that would have been an incredibly important stimulus for them to notice to enhance their reproductive success. So that's the idea of salience. It's a general term to describe how meaningful or attention grabbing a stimulus is. Now, if you found this video especially salient, hit the like button to say thanks. We're a small channel, so subscribing really helps us out too. Feel free to leave a comment and we have more videos coming on all things psychology. So until next time, keep thinking. Let's see, when did that Doritos commercial come out anyway? 1989 starring Jay Leno. That's the scariest part of his whole video.